today we're going to perform a spider vein treatment called sclerotherapy. We have Francis helping us out today. The first thing we're going to do is just disinfect the area with some alcohol. As you can see, we get a tiny little injection right into the spider vein and you can watch it just blanch away. What I do is just keep injecting until I see a tiny little bleb. That bleb just lets me know that we have enough solution in the spider vein and that I can just go ahead and pull out. Next thing I do is just lightly kind of massage that area, pushing the sclerotherapy straight through the spider vein and helping it kind of deliver to the other patches. The goal for sclerotherapy sometimes can be to do a, as least injections as possible just for patient comfort. And as you see, we can just watch it travel right throughout. Now afterwards, the patient typically doesn't have much downtime to this. Uh, Frances will no notice her spider veins looking a little bit worse before they look better. So they'll look a little red, a little angry, um, a little bit worse off than actually when we started. Um, but typically right at about the two week point is when you start to see a really nice fade. Now after the first treatment, she may see some of the spider veins disappear completely. Uh, she may some of, see some of them not respond very much at all and she might see some of them just fade a little bit. Sclerotherapy really is a series of treatments, so I usually recommend to all my patients it takes anywhere from three to five sessions to fade the areas away. At the end of five sessions, you're looking at about an 80% reduction of spider veins in the area. So unfortunately, some of them can be non-responsive. Typically, the, the ones that respond best are the ones that we're injecting here. So. They're more pronounced, they're a little bit more purpley blue. The ones that we typically find resistance on are very tiny thread-like red ones that makes it very hard to get a needle tip into. But you can see here the areas that we have treated just look a little bit red, a little bit raised, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now one very important part of sclerotherapy is just making sure that Frances wears her compression stockings afterwards. So typically you want to wear your compression stockings for about five days after each treatment. One other really important part of this treatment is making sure that she gets no direct sun exposure to the legs for the next 10 days. I usually let my patients resume a light exercise the next day. However, over the next five days, if they do want to exercise, they do have to keep their compression stockings on. So normally these treatments are spaced about four weeks apart. The reason why we space them so far apart is that you really do want to give them time to heal up and to see what you actually get out of a treatment. While three to five is an average amount of treatment, some people respond very, very well after just one or two. Spider vein treatments, a lot of the times, is a, is a maintenancing thing, unfortunately. So the spider veins that we treat today may go away completely. Some of them might come back over time, and some of them may never come back. Because she does have spider veins already over her legs, she's more prone to them. So she may develop spider veins in other areas. So this is just something that she'll want to keep up on over time. People find that it's a lot easier to do these treatments through the fall so that they don't have to wear compression stockings when it's, when it's very warm outside. And also avoiding the sun in the summer can be hard to do. Normally in one session of sclerotherapy, you can get pretty much both legs done depending on the amount of spider veins that you have. 
but I normally do a 30 minute treatment and in that amount of time I can normally get everything done on both legs. Or just kind of coming to the end of the treatment here though. Pretty much got everything that bothers Francis. After we finish the sclerotherapy, what we do is we basically get cotton balls and tape on the area. What this, help do, what this does is help add extra compression to the area. So when Frances goes to put her compression stockings on, it, that, those main areas that we did just has a little bit of added extra pressure. The bandages can come off 24 hours after the treatment. So Frances will actually sleep with these tonight with those compression stockings on. So the first 24 hours is probably the toughest part of it because it can be hard to sleep in the compression stockings, especially when it's warm out. After that, I just require my patients to wear it during the day for the next five days. So when they're up and around and then they can take them off to sleep.